بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد pretending to be happy in a sad world actual happiness حياة طيبة comes from Allah جل جلاله and the system which Allah سبحانه وتعالى has fixed for us that's why they say don't ignore the truth for perceived happiness it is perceived happiness and we think so we got it under control and we know it all and we've cracked a formula we've cracked the equation but the truth and the real facts and the hardcore facts and the reality of us getting it wrong and loving this perceived deception a person becomes blind how long can a person pretend to be happy? How can they pretend that they've got it under control and they know exactly what to do and how to do it? So, when he just said that keep your friends close, your enemies closer, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. The problem is how do you know who your friends are? So, we're living in this world of deception and different perception but this perception is not a perception of the true situation on the ground it's again our perceived our uh, forecasted thoughts and what we think it to be correct but in actual fact it not it is not close to what we think so it should be so thus pretending and secondly the world is a sad world anyway so people generally show they're happy because they want everybody else to think they're happy and we start pretending whether it's between husband and wife couples they show that they are the perfect couple a match made in heaven but in reality they live in two different worlds two different realms where the parents show that their children are the best children so outside They've got the best children, but in that house, they are the worst children. The parents dread these kids. Like somebody said, I could tell that my parents hated me. My bath toys were a toaster and a radio. My bath toys were a toaster and a radio. My mother had morning sickness after I was born. She had morning sickness. Somebody was kidnapped and they seen, sent a piece of the finger to the father. So he said, I want more proof. I want more proof. Proof of life. So it seems that uh, the family's got it under control. The parents uh, have the best children. But in actual fact, they dread their kids. They wish they weren't born. So we put up a facade. Whether a businessman shows his business is running well, he's got it under control. Somebody's taken money from uh, people, investment, etc. The system has crashed already, but he shows everything is happening. Ponzi scheme. And worse than that is the religious person showing he's happy with the dean, but he wakes up every morning with the desire of dunya, with the ambition of dunya, with the fikr and the worry on concern of the people of Batil. So he's saying, I'm religious, I'm dindar, I love salat, I love tilawat. But in actual fact, his priority is everything else. The employee, the professional, they show that they're happy at work, I've got the best job, I've got the best boss, I've got the best company. They pretend to be happy, but they dread going to work. So people love in this fallacy, in this delusion and fantasy. So a person spends his whole life dedicating all his energies to avenues which will lead to destruction, sadness, not happiness. So a person thinks, so after I acquire these as Bob, I get this year, I'm going to be happy but the sadness increases. So we have to analyze our life, see which direction we are going into. 
That's why Azir Hassan used to say, Miskinun ibn Adam radiya bidadin halaluhu hisab wa haramuha adab. What a pauper, what a unfortunate human being where he is happy with a home that the halal there will be accountability and the haram there will be adab. When we go in akhirat and the halal will account for it and the haram there will be punishment. In akhadahu min hallihi husiba bi ni'matihi if he takes from the halal, he left to account for every bounty. وَإِنْ أَخَذَهُ مِنْ حَرَامٍ عُذِّبَ بِهِ And if he taken it from haram, he will be punished. He wrote to Umar bin Abdul Aziz and said, Hazrat Hassan wrote to Umar bin Abdul Aziz and said, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ أَمَّا بَعَدْ فَكَأَنَّكَ بِآخِرِ مَنْ كَتَبَ عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتْ قَدْ مَعَتْ The last on who death was written, had died. As if he's saying, you're the last loving person on earth, so love life. So the Mashaykh, when he should write letters, they should write advices as well. So as if you're the last person on earth, love your life like that. And the angel of death will come visit you any second. So he gave a reply, he said, Salamun alayka ka'annaka bid-dunya lam takun. As if you were never in the world. He took it one step further. Love life as if you were never in the world. وَكَأَنَّكَ بِالْآخِرَةِ لَمْ تَزَلْ And as if perpetually you were in Akhira. Means if you had to see Akhirat and love life, then you would have loved a different life. فُذَيْلِ مِنْ يَعَيْزُ يُسْتَيْ الدُّخُولِ فِي الدُّنْيَا هَيِّن To come into the dunya is very easy. وَلَكِنِ التَّخَلُّسْ مِنْهَا الشَّدِيدِ but to escape this dunya, it's very difficult. It's not an easy task. So we came in easily, but to get out alive with all the sharait and conditions, that requires serious effort in the correct direction. Some mashaykh used to say, أَجَبًا لِمَنْ يَعْرِفْ أَنَّ الْمَوْتْ حَقٌ كَيْفَ يَحْفْرَى That this insan knows how amazing, how strange, you know that death will come. But you are happy. So we are living in a delusion. We hear the announcement. We place people in the cupboard with our own hands. But we love life like we're going to live forever. In dunya we particular to the last detail. Not a crease in a piece of cloth. Not a scratch on a car. But deen can be destroyed and be consoled. Amazing. That a person knows that Jahannam is true. Ya lam anna naru hakun kefa yadhak. Yet he laughs, he enjoys life, he's beguiled. Wa ajabal limay yara taqal luba dunya bi ahliha. Strange, you see this dunya moving this way, that way. It's stable today, it's unstable today. The, the uh, weather, the life of this world is like the weather. It's rainy, then sunny, then snow, then hail. Yet he is contented with dunya. Somebody is obese, they've got stocked up, they've, they're happy. Tomorrow they can be skinny, underweight, starve. Somebody is employed today, tomorrow unemployed. Somebody is free today, free today, tomorrow they'll become a slave. They can be captured, they can become a prisoner. Today there's peace, tomorrow there can be war, today there's wealth, tomorrow there can be poverty, today there's health, tomorrow there can be sickness, today there's youth, tomorrow there can be old age, today somebody's married, she's happy, she's got a husband, tomorrow she'll become a widow, somebody's got parents today, tomorrow they can become an orphan, somebody's fat and hale today, tomorrow they can become paralyzed. So we have to ponder on this instability of dunya. Somebody is above the earth, tomorrow they'll be below the earth, today they love in, tomorrow they dead, today they dunya, in this world they are in dunya, tomorrow they'll be in akhirah. Destiny is true, 
أو risk is true. Everything has been destined, stipulated, fixed. But Jannah and Jahannam is not fixed. Dunya is fixed. So that thing which Allah has predestined is fixed. We give our whole life to that. Give our life to our profession, to our companies, to our sports, to our status, to the corporate ladder. What about the status of Akhirah? So man will never be happy when he suffices with the material systems. The material system is immaterial. And that which is immaterial is actually material. That's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say, Ajabtu li talib dunya wal maut yatlubuhu. I am amazed at a seeker of dunya while death is seeking him. وَعَجَبْتُ لِغَافِلٍ وَلَيْسَ بِمَغْفُولْ عَنْهُ I'm amazed at a person who's so negligent, is unaware of the situation of life, and nobody is unaware of his deeds, his actions, every move has been recorded, every action has been written down, inscribed. وَعَجَعَبْتُ وَعَجَبْتُ لِضَعِكِ مِلْ إِفِي Somebody is laughing a lot. وَلَا يَدْرِي رَضِيَ عَنْهُمْ سَخِطَ Laughing, you're joking, you're relaxing, you're taking it easy. But you don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with you or angry with you. So, it's, it's not just about doing things, but what, what we are in, what thing I'm doing, and what's the reality is two different things. We, it shouldn't be that we presume that we got akhirat in place, We've got dunya in place and then at the time of death the reality kicks in. So this assumption, you think it's one thing but it's something else. You see there was a man on a bicycle who approached the US border from Mexico. He was carrying a very heavy sack. The border control said, what's in the sack? He said, sand. The guy checked and he only found sand so he let the man through. Another week later again he came carrying the heavy sack. What's in the sack? Sand. He checked again, verified and he went through. It's continued every week, month after month, for many, many months. Then one day the cyclist didn't show up. So it so happened that one day the guard met the cyclist at the eating place, outlet, restaurant. So he said, you know what, over the six months we've used all our intel, all our intelligence. We've been trying to figure out, must we do tests of the sand, the soil we've checked, it, there's nothing there. They can't be that somebody is moving a bag of sand every time. So we're sure that you're smuggling something, but we don't know. So please just tell me in confidence, I'll keep it confidential. What are you smuggling? So the man replied, you are correct. We're smuggling bicycles every time he came in with a different bicycles. So where border control thought so there was a problem and where the actual problem was, was two opposites. So... We, we, we consider happiness in this avenue, but there's no happiness there. They said there was a new policeman who came on the first day in a patrol car. So the sergeant put him with somebody who was experienced. They were driving around. And the first assignment was to disperse any group of people that were, were not needed to be there. So they came onto one street. They found that there was a group of people there. So this new policeman said, I'll handle it. I'll take care of it. So... When they got there, he jumped out of the car and he started screaming. He took out his baton, move along, move along, go to your homes. People weren't moving. Then he took out his taser and he said, people, you need to move along. So people looked confused, but he started moving away. They got back to the car and said, you see, in my first day, in a few minutes, I got it sorted out. He said, yeah, br brilliant job. You did a good job of it. But a pity that it was a bus stop. A pity. A pity it was a bus, bus stop. So those people were not loitering around. You thought so you were the hero and you thought so you sorted it out. But in actual fact, you sorted nothing. You actually caused a bigger problem. Caused a bigger problem. So when a person is living in this deception, they said, but they show they are happy. On the contrary, when somebody is on haq, on truth, it looks like they said, oh, this person is making so much bad, he's awake at night, oh, he has to teach so much, oh, he's out in a part of Allah all the time. 
Oh shame, poor wife. Oh shame, poor children. Oh shame, poor person. But they're the happiest people on earth. They're the happiest people on earth. They say one scholar was traveling one day and he passed a village and he seen some people working with stones. So into the first person, he asked him, I see you're very busy. What has been made here? The person was very upset. He said, can't you see I'm busy? I'm busy cutting stones. The man said, the uh, scholar said, yes, I can see that you are busy, but I want to know what, what's your purpose here? What are you making? So he screamed. He said, I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm dying here working in the hot sun and I need to earn and you troubling me. Let me carry on with my job. Stop bothering me. So the scholar moved on to the second person. He asked him, what will be, what are you busy making here? So this laborer replied, you know what, I don't really care. I'm just here for the money. I get my wages. I do my work and I'm gone. I don't care what has been made here. So he decided to move ahead. He met another person. He said, what's been made here? He said, we build in a masjid. He said, with Allah's permission, with Allah's favor, Allah has chosen me. Allah has accepted me to be part of this great khidmah of deen. So the alim said, you look, mashallah, very happy compared to everybody else that I've met. Don't you think so? it's very hard, hard work? He said, I don't feel tired at all. I'm here before everybody comes and I go when after everybody's gone. Then he said, you know what, uh, there was no masjid here, Allah made intizam, we got this land and now mashallah we should go to another locality, a lot of difficulties and hardship. And now inshallah we'll have uh, a, a masjid. So every stone that I chisel out, every, every movement that I get, it's a movement of pleasure and enjoyment and ecstasy. And I can't imagine what enjoyment and pleasure I'll get when this building is complete. When we have the Jalsa, when we get the senior ulama and Allah use me as a means for, for a masjid to be constructed. So when I just, this thought comes to my mind, I, 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 the work is nothing. It's the work Allah has taken from me. So even at night when I sleep, I, 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 I dream, I think of what other changes, what other things, what other architecture, what other implementation I can do and help in the structure. So besides my work time, out of work, my mind is, my heart, my soul is here. So while I'm working, I, my heart and soul is here and I'm making dhikr. When I'm not sure also, my heart is here as well. And I've got never been so happy in my life. So the alim smiled and he left and said, this is the secret to happiness. The same three people at the same work doing the same things, but one was happy and the other one was ultra sad in dismay and in distress and angry and upset. Likewise, there are those people in the world as well where we live in a life of deception. Everybody's working, but there's only one that's working properly where he'll enjoy before the Jannah is built in this world, he'll have enjoyment. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. And secondly, after death, the greatest enjoyment. Wa fil akhirati hasana. Wa qina adab al nar. And he'll be protected and preserved. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality and the understanding of the shortness of this life. The amal for today is Alaykum bihad al ilm. That holds steadfast onto this knowledge before it will be taken away. And this knowledge will be taken away where you will see that the ulama will be departing from this world. So while we get a chance, let us make a niyat to take benefit from the ulama and the mashayikh, the sulaha.